to celebrate the power for good in the universe that we can use. And you know what? It's you. <laughs> Please join me Thank in you. stating in our statement of purpose. Our community lovingly and joyfully inspires, supports, and empowers individuals to discover and express their divinity. So because we believe in the power of prayer, the power for good in the universe that we're all a part of, we'll have a prayer circle at the back of the church right after the service. You can share your answered prayers at that time, but please join us right after the service. It's not long, but it's a wonderful time to share your prayers. If you don't want to join us at the back of the circle, there's also a prayer chest in the back. You can fill out a card, and you can put your name on it or not, but we'll pray for you. We have some announcements. There'll be meditation Wednesday at 7.30 on um, Zoom. Reverend Linda will lead. There are cards on the back table that'll tell you how to get on Zoom. And this is a great midweek pick-me-up. And it'll help you rebalance your energy because we got a lot of solar flares coming, coming up this week. So you might want to do that. We're going to be feeding the Flathead on, number, on November 6th at Bethlehem Lutheran Church. We need volunteers to come by at 5.30, and there's a sign-up sheet on the back table. And Bill Kale will be here Monday evening, November the 19th, from the 20th, I'm sorry, from 6.30 to 8.30 with his ancient Tibetan singing bowls. These are actually healing bowls, and you can actually have a mighty powerful experience with these things. There, there's healings, there's insights, we pray for the earth. If you want to come, you can lie on the floor, bring a, bring a pad or a mat or a blanket, or you can sit in a chair. And now's the time to greet your neighbor. You can say hello to an old friend or make a new one, but it's okay to get up and walk around. Hello. <laughs> say I'm hey.
if you'd like, please remain. Hello, hello. Good morning. morning. Please, please remain standing if you'd like and join us in our first congregational song. All right. It's a waltz. Yeah, we encourage waltzing. It's in every one of us to be wise. Find your heart, open up both your eyes. We can all know everything without ever knowing. great to see you all here today. It's that time in our service where we get to bless our children, the children in our community, the children in the world, and the child within each one of us. So if you would join me in the blessing of the children, we see you, who you really are, made in the image and likeness of God. We cherish you, we support you, and we love you. And so from this space of love, let us move within, knowing truly there is only one life, one power, one presence in the universe. And although it is known by many names, today I call it God, God the good, omnipotent. What I absolutely know is there is nothing, nothing outside of God. God is light and love and peace and joy. God is health and wholeness and abundance. God truly is all there is. It is in its essence that we live and breathe and have our being. We are individualized expressions of the one, one with love and light and peace and joy, one with health and wholeness, one with abundance. And so as I speak my word this day, I know that we move through the ensuing week easily and effortlessly, joyfully filled up and spilling over. I know that each person that we meet is an opportunity to share that light, to share that love, and to know the truth that all God's beings are whole and perfect. And I'm grateful. I'm grateful for the opportunity that we have to be the truth of who we are. I'm grateful for the opportunity we have to come together in peace, in love, in joy, and in community. I simply give thanks as I release this word now to the perfect working of the perfect law, which always, always, and only says yes. Please join me in affirming. And so it is. Amen. All right. So I have a song here by Melissa Felipe. She's a New Thought artist out of Santa Rosa, California. And uh, I've taken this on as my personal theme song. I think you'll know why. <laughs> I 
used to disown myself I didn't know I was frightened I wouldn't let myself be angry It wasn't enlightened Then my friend told me to really be free I've got to be embracing every part of me Though even sometimes it feels like pulling teeth I go kicking and screaming down the path of transformation My higher self and my dark side giving me my Learning to love every part of myself Even parts I hit on the highest shelf Kicking and screaming down the path of transformation I like to think of myself as wise Full of insight so rare I think I really go with the flow And know I will stay there I get to feeling I can handle any old change Then something new shows up and life gets rearranged Suddenly I'm struggling and feeling so strange As I go kicking and screaming down the path of transformation Yeah, yeah My higher self and my dark side giving me my information Learning to love every part of myself Even parts I'd hit on the highest shelf Kicking and screaming down the path of transformation Here's the truth Sometimes it's a hard road This working to become enlightened can't say it always makes me rejoice But looking at the option, it's still my choice I go kicking and screaming down the path of transformation You know it's true, my higher self and my dark side Giving me my information I go kicking and screaming down the path of transformation Maybe you too, we all go kicking and screaming down the path of transformation Yeah, yeah, yeah Oh, thank you so much. That was so fabulous. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my goodness. Kathy, Rochelle, thank you so much. Oh, my gosh. Steve, Will, and... Jo oh, my God. Dawn. That's all right. <laughs> oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. I get so caught up in my good that sometimes I forget uh, the names of my good. That includes Red Star and Richard. Thank you, who were up here earlier. Oh, my gosh. Anybody else relate to that song? Yes. Kicking and screaming down the path of transformation. But right before that, we also had there's a power for good in the universe, and we can use it. And that's what it is that we're kicking and screaming about. We're like trying to do things on our own, of our own free will, of course, and thinking it's all our own energy and beingness that's creating it. And you know what's happening? We're just having a little fight, fist fight with ourselves. That's all we're doing. <laughs> Oh my goodness, oh my goodness, what a beautiful day. Man, that really just, that music lifts me up. It moves me out of that, um, that idea of, of focusing on the ills of the world, the ills of, 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 of that, you know, fill my life. 
uh, and look like truth when actually they're just facts I experience. And so I hear good music and I'm just like, oh, thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. So again, don't we love them? Yeah, yeah amen. Oh, you guys are, you bring, you bring a ministry, each one of you, through your music. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Okay, I know I'm supposed to be doing something here today. <laughs> Besides saying, good morning. It is so wonderful to be here with you. It is so wonderful to be in your presence and recognize that each one of us bring a piece of that tapestry of life that no one else can bring. Each person here does. And here's what we're here for. It is our life business to translate truth into visible manifestation. So what that translates down to, it's so simple, is we just want to bring the goodness of life forth, the goodness of life that's always around us and is certainly always for us, but that we don't always recognize or claim. We can even recognize it for others and we don't claim it for ourselves. So we need to know that the world needs us in all our splendor. The world needs us exactly as we are, as we recognize that we are the magnificence of God in expression. The world doesn't need any more crankiness, any more harsh judgment, any more violence. The world needs magnificence of God through us and as us. That's what we come together for. That's who we are. So, and you'll know you're there when you experience it. You'll know that's where you are. You'll know you've stepped into that idea that I am the magnificence of God. You won't have to sit and contemplate it necessarily, although it can come that way, certainly, certainly. It may come to you listening to a piece of music. It may come to you when your neighbor smiles at you. It may come to you when the, the person in front of you just turns around and asks you a question. But in that moment, in that moment, you can be the magnificence of God in expression in every single moment. Now, last, last week I talked about, um, or I brought up the story of the fisherman on the Sea of Galilee. We talked about that. I talked about that. And... You know, they were using logic. They'd already fished. They'd fished all night long and it didn't work. But then Jesus spoke to them when they came back and he said, throw the net over on the other side and go out. Now that goes against logic. They're going to the same place. How could that make any difference? But they did go and they went in faith. So I want to talk about that today because faith and logic sometimes go like this. Faith is always here, but logic is right here. And logic is how we're going to prove things and how we know things and how we can expect things to be. But we want to move that logic into that place of having faith. It's just logical that we have faith. We don't want to get rid of logic or the idea of it or the gifts that it brings, but we want to use it to move into our faith, which is trusting the invisible that which is yet to be, trusting, expecting, seeing, appreciating that which is yet to be. We don't need to have faith in what we have, what we've had. We want to have faith in a greater expression of what is our desire to experience in life. And allow it to happen. Allow it to happen. Because if we are not believing that what we have faith in will bring forth a greater, a, gift, a greater experience to us, then why have faith in it? Why would we have faith in a God who would, is going to punish us when we miss the mark? Why would we have faith in a God who's already predetermined what our, faith, our, our lives should look like, so therefore I'm going to have the bad just because it was predetermined. I'm going to go without because it was predetermined. I'm going to suffer because it was predetermined. Take a breath because 
That's not what the teaching is about. That's never what the teaching was about. That's not what Jesus said. That's not how the, the wisdom of the ages came through. It was never about a punishing of God. It was about a, an experience of the connection to the one through, through yourself, not through the guru across the street. Really and truly, because we touch all those stones. I love this. I love that we touch. I, I listen to book. I mean, I read books. I listen to videos. I listen to other ministers speak. And certainly out of, outside of our congregation, because I love faith. I love the power that faith has. I do. I love the commitment that faith takes. Oh, absolutely. And I love the faith and the absolute and so we, we gather this stuff together. They're like touchstones. We gather them together and we decide what fits for us. And then we go out regardless of what they look like, whether what we're believing in and what we're uh, calling our truth. And we go out and we try to be the best we can from that. Well, this is, this is what I want to talk about today. No, you are the best. There's never, ever going to be a time when you're going to be more of who you are than in this moment. There's never, ever going to be a time or an experience that's going to change you into something greater, better, more sacred, more precious than you are in this moment. And given that idea that you're already perfect you're already the godness of in expression that you are know that that our human actions have not have not diminished the goodness that each one of us is it may have to, and certainly can diminish our experience with each other it never affects our connection with the one. Our behavior does not affect the connection with the one. Now that might sound okay if we, we've, read, we've led really um, quite decent lives, but what about those that haven't? It's the same. It's the same. We just have to recognize that. It doesn't change with the one. There's a power for good in the universe for all of its creation. We were made in the image and likeness of a divine idea. When Reverend Linda says when the children are made in the image and likeness of God, we know that's a divine idea, and that includes all of us. And to remember that is what, what, we're, call, what we're called to do. We come together so we'll remember that. So we can stand under the shelter of each other. So we can live in the flow of life. Even when we get off course, we can come back into the flow of life, which is the goodness of life. And we correct our conditions. When we correct our conditions and when we correct our thinking, our consciousness, then we also correct the flow. We correct ourselves in and we're back in the flow, full out in the flow of life. But I want to talk a little bit, too, about illness and about um, this past week. I'll just tell you what my experience was. This past week, and, and last Sunday, I prayed for, I asked for in prayer support around body health, okay? And from Monday on, I was like, I couldn't make my appointments. I couldn't go and visit do the visits I should uh, normally do, and I kept getting sicker and sicker, and boy, I was praying, I was calling my prayer prep partner, and I was talking the good talk and doing all the stuff, and it came to me, it came to me like this, what are, uh, what are you congested with? That still small voice was not small or still. And I realized that I was congested with um, some judgment going on. Some of it, it was right in my face, and I thought I was just contemplating, but I'd actually made judgments. Um, 
So it was my opportunity to look at, look at what was going on in my life. And it didn't clear up in that moment, of course. I, I like instant gratification. It didn't happen. Uh, but within hours... I felt better. And here's what is, is true. When our con- This is about our consciousness. See, I'd been focusing so much on how badly I felt and how nothing was working and, and how I needed to call somebody else for prayer support and, and, you know, all these things. And here's the thing. You call up your friends and they say, have you tried this? Have you tried this? Have you tried this? And I'm like, no, 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 and I'm not going to. I just want to feel better. I don't want to do any work. I want to feel better is all. Well, when the consciousness changed and I started looking at the congestion I had from, not, from judgment and maybe a little non-forgiveness, what happens? It's so beautiful. The energy changes. And of course I felt better later. I don't know if my body felt better because I wasn't uh, focusing on it. It took to the next day I realized, oh my gosh, I feel so much better. And it was, I just bring that up because it just happened. And it's so clear that we are so in charge of how we feel. We really are. Regardless of what's going on with us, we're in charge of how we feel from within. Now, I want to tell you a story about um, a woman who really, really uh, embodied the idea of being in charge of, of the power that's for us in the universe. Her name is uh, Myrtle Fillmore, and she lived in the late 1800s, and she was a school teacher, and she had been told, uh, the doctors had agreed with her at the at the time she wrote this, she had two months to live approximately because she had, she came from a family that had, uh, the prognosis was, um, um, she had tuberculosis and it ran in the family. And it was just a, you know, not a good prognosis. But she was also a real spiritual adventurer. Myrtle Fillmore had, was really steeped in her spirituality. And she got this idea that there was, you know, life is just energy. All life is really energy. And she's looking at the idea of if, you know, the, the um, least uh, animals do not have the intelligence, supposedly, as, as humans do to make choices, etc. cetera, but, th- but they're still made of energy, and we're made of energy, and all life is energy. So she got this idea that maybe energy needed to be directed by intelligence. And if intelligence can direct the energy, then she could, therefore, direct what was going on with her body because everything is energy. Everything is. So she took this, she had this little um, um, affirmation that she said. She said, I am a child of God, and therefore, I am not in service to this illness. Did you hear that? I'm not in service to this illness. And how many times do we serve what's going, what, for, what we're experiencing? I was really serving that cold. Oh my God, I'm so miserable. You know, she said, I'm not in service to that. And she kept repeating it, and she kept repeating it. And then she decided through her consciousness, she said, "Um, I realized I could talk to each part of my body. So she started telling her lungs what good good shape they were in, her liver and and all of this. The bottom line is she, along with her husband, Charles, um, co-founded the Unity School of Christianity, and she lived for 45 more years. Now, We hear stories like this, and we say, yeah, but, yeah, but. She was told it was basically an inherited disease. What is possible out here? What do we believe is possible? That's all I want to look at today is what are we telling ourselves is possible and what is not possible in our lives? We could just get a piece sheet of paper and possibilities on the left and impossibilities on the right. Which one are you going to fill up with? Fill up first. 
what it, when you look at your heart's desire and what you want to do with your life and what it is you want to express and what do you want to experience and how do you want to give and how do you want to, how do you want to interact? What's possible? And what are we telling ourselves is impossible? She said she promised herself not to retard spirit's free flow in her body ever again. She made a promise to herself, I will not do that again. I will not take that which is given to me as truth. It may be a fact in the moment, but it's not truth. Truth can never be changed. It can't be diminished. It can't be added to. It is, and it's whole, and it's perfect. Truth is. And you know what? We don't have to get healthy. We are health. It's just about experiencing it. We don't have to be loved. We are love. And are we giving it and receiving it? That's what it's about. We don't have to become good, become smart. We live in a universe of wisdom, and we can be wise. And we live from the power of life, so we are powerful. So when we consider all of that which we are, it should weigh outweigh that which we aren't. What we are is whole, perfect, complete. What we aren't is satisfied. What we aren't is satisfied. And what we've done is, is um, said it wasn't possible for us or for another. But Robert Browning says there is an inmost center in all of us where truth abides in fullness. There's an inmost center in all Every one of us, where truth abides in fullness. That's the bottom line for us. Truth abides in us. And so therefore we can say, I know. I know the understanding absolute is in me and informing me of high truth. Absolute is within us, informing us of high truth. That's that still small voice. That's that intuition. Oh, someone shared with me today about following her intuition. It was one of the most beautiful stories I've heard in such a long time because it, it makes me excited because she's excited because she's had a, a, a shift or a gift or this, this coming forth of her wholeness in a way that, that we, it happens to us as we, as we recognize we are that which we desire. We are all of that which we desire. It just gets covered up sometimes or forgotten or discounted, but it's all there. It's all there perfect because the law of mind, the creative center, follows the pattern of thought and it responds by corresponding. So whatever we're giving into the law of mind, that pattern, it just follows right along and we get what we give it, right? It responds by corresponding. So we decide, we decide what's possible, what's possible without the how, without the why, without stopping with logic. To me, it's very logical to depend on the absolute. Very logical to follow the teachings of a master teacher, the master teacher, Jesus. So here's what I know, whether we employ the method of medication when we're ill or meditation. It's what we, it, it's up to us and us only to be accepting. 
It's up to our mind and body to be accepting of what it is we're taking in and calling our good. I read not too long ago that the Chinese have a, um, have a uh, custom of paying the doctors as long as they're well. Isn't that lovely? Wouldn't that? (laughs) And they quit paying them when they're not well. (laughs) Isn't that a beautiful thing? Can you imagine that kind of exchange? Oh, I'm so so healthy this week. Thank you. Wouldn't that be wonderful to get the news? And today the news of the world is, oh my gosh, the think tank is full of of leaders of our country and it's full of... of, uh, All these different groups, mothers, youth, children, elders, uh, everyone is represented in the think tank and they are just working together for the greatest good of all. Can you imagine how thrilled we'd be? And the the biggest problem they have with the think tank for our world is where to hold it next year where to hold this this, um, big cauldron of peace and goodness and love and well-being is for everyone. Where shall we do it? This year it was in Zurich. Where will it be next year? That's the big thing. Okay, how about this one? And this is how we get the news. You know, there's a horrible um, uh, natural disaster happens, and we know what happens in natural disasters. Lives can be lost. Properties can be destroyed. All kinds of things happen. And... And there's so much good and support coming in from the countries around the world that we're having to say, slow down a little bit. You've given so much good, slow down a little bit. Wouldn't that be magnificent? Wouldn't that be magnificent news to hear? The state of the economy Don't we all look at that or listen to it at least a bit? How about this kind of news? The state of the economy is we are so abundantly supplied on this planet Earth with everything we could possibly need. We're considering whether or not to um, not use money (laughs) any longer (laughs) because we're all wealthy and it's available to all. Now that might seem far-fetched. Is it impossible? I don't know. But what I do know is it's possible for us to feel this peace that we desire for the rest of the world within us. It's possible. It's possible to to feel loved by the absolute enough that you can love the others. It's possible to believe in the abundance of God in such a great way that we are so happy to share with others and receive the gifts and share the gifts that we don't even consider what's going to happen if we don't have. Because there is no such thing as we don't have if we believe in the givingness of God. There might be temporary things that happen. There's no such thing as God withholding its good from us or from anyone. So are we open to it? Do we recognize that that we're part of it? It's not only our our gift, but it's our job to know that. Because the healing stream of life is behind every appearance. It's within every experience. And so knowing that by giving our permission to the self, we can surrender. Surrender the old stories and the old hurts. We can surrender the idea that we need to protect ourselves against. We can surrender into the wisdom of the universe. We can surrender into the power of the universe. We can surrender into life everlasting. 
We can surrender to, into peace that is beyond description. And we can surrender into the well-beingness that is always within us. doesn't change or become modified by anything on the outside. Our well-being is solid within us. And so while we do the kicking and the screaming out here, it's just how we do it. And when we withdraw out here in the world, it can be temporary, very temporary. And when we open up and we're just ready to let spirit flow through us and life carry us in the flow of grace and beauty and joy and peace and love and creative expression, <sighs> then we embrace the idea that the understanding absolute is within and always informing us of high truth. And we welcome it. We welcome high truth as we provide the shelter for each other, as we share the stories of our good, as we share the gifts of goodness that we carry within us, with each other, as we listen, as we sing, and as we hold the silence. God is good, and you are loved, and so it is. Amen. Let's take a moment so Reverend Yvonne's words can kind of sink in our hearts. I want to thank those who have joined us online. We're so grateful for your support. We look forward to seeing you next week. And I hope you enjoyed the service today. Now it's our opportunity.